So before we get going, um, maybe most of you didn't see it because you were looking forward. I usually stand in the back um, just so that I can pray for you guys and pray for whoever comes in and, you know, just watching always, you know, um, the watchman on the wall. And so guess what I see walk in? Adrian walking. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I like almost fell over backwards. Holding on. But it's okay. Holding, holding on to mom. And holding on to great great grandma, what, both walking. I was just joking. She didn't get it. She didn't get it. She, yeah, it went right over her head. So it's okay. Yeah, too bad because it went right over her head. But anyway, she didn't hear it. So I see little Adrian. Well, little little Adrian walking in. So hey, is the Lord faithful or is the Lord faithful? We've been praying for that little boy. Not even worried, knowing Lord, you know, you got your plan. You know, and, and sometimes I remind you that the Lord allows these little setbacks in our lives or what appears to be setbacks, what appear to be disappointments, only to grow our faith. Amen? Amen. Only to grow our dependence upon Him. Because imagine if everything just happened always the way we would want it, then, I, you know, we would never really be trusting in Him. Right? Nothing that you don't know already, but just a, a loving reminder. Again, God will allow what appear to be small disappointments in our life, hurdles that we need to jump over only to build our faith. Uh, and if anything, man, my prayer life has gotten better for Adrian. Hasn't yours? <laughs> All right? And there he is walking in, man. So what a joy to see that. Now, real quickly, before we jump into the teaching, actually, why don't you go to Philippians chapter 4 and put a marker there or just hold on to it because that's where we're going to be in today's portion of Scripture. We're going to start a new book next week because we finish Philippians 4 today. Philippians chapter 4. Okay, so you, gotta, you put a marker there, hold on to it, because we're going to jump into it. Before we do, we got a couple of announcements. Um, the main one was little Adrian Walking Man. Praise God for that. The second one, uh, Nati, is going to speak to us. So let's give her a nice, warm, embarrassing welcome. Because you know how much she loves to come up. And I'm sorry that I'm, we're missing, like, the big, the, the big group that always sits there, we're missing, because we want her to be yet more embarrassed. Yeah, it's all the time. He always embarrasses me. Go now. By the way, bro, I was going to ask you in my life, but I don't see her here. Obviously, she's okay. Praise God. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about married life? Because you know that Jerry got married last week. We, we showed pictures. I know you were on your honeymoon or not, but either way, we were like, hey, they got married on Saturday. Why are they not here on Sunday? What, what, what's going on here, man? Yeah, I would, I would imagine so. I would have too, and I wanted to, but Derek said, you're the pastor, bro. Get up. You got to go. So anyway, tell us, bro, how's, how's married life in a week? Praise God, bro. So, so everything's going great because we've been praying for you. Hallelujah. Don't know what that means, but it sounds great. <laughs> I like it, bro. No, no, that I know, but yes, yes, you got her. Praise the Lord. I like it, my bro. I, I like it a lot. Yeah. You know, I'm glad she's not here to hear that, bro. We'll keep it, we'll keep it between each other, yeah? <laughs> anyway, praise God, bro. Hey, so um, we, we've, been, we've been praying for you too, my bro. 
It should be. Wednesday night, we prayed for you as usual. So praise God. And so, hey, family, real quickly before we get going and dig into that which is most important, which is God's Word, which is why we come together. Um, yesterday, as you know, and it's, you know, most of the Wednesday night group, we, we partook of a conference. And we just had a blessed, blessed, blessed time. Um, can, we, can we show some pictures? Ernst, can you get the lights real quickly? Um, some good, great-looking guy. I don't know. But anyway, um, so that was, um, so just going to show some pictures, and I want some of the guys that I asked to come up. Go help. Okay, so hold on, because I didn't know that there was a double take there, but either way. No, 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 that one, no, this one. And so, wait, so, so let me tell you a little bit about the conference. Um, it was to commemorate, because on October 31st, for those of you guys that know a little bit about history, uh, October 31st marks the 500-year commemoration of the Reformation. There was a time, real quickly, that the Roman Catholic Church um, had this, uh, nothing against the Roman Catholics, by the way, they, they had this, this um, I guess, very firm grip on, on the people, and, and, and the, the Bible was only written in Latin, so only the priests were able to speak to the people, and then, unfortunately, uh, a lot of um, improprieties were transpiring because people didn't know, because you couldn't pick this up and read it on your own like we can today. And so the priests, at that time, they were really subjugating the people coming up with stuff that really doesn't exist in God's Word. And there was a gentleman called Martin Luther. You know that, you, you, I'm sure you've heard of him. He, he one day decided, you know, the, my salvation comes by, by grace and by faith alone. It doesn't come by works. It doesn't come by me giving or by me doing. It's a free gift from God. Yes, as we, as we receive that free gift, now we start doing works because that's just a natural byproduct of God working in us. Amen? Right? Now, now, now the, 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 the maturity level starts changing. Our, our, our mindset starts changing. Um, so, so we start partaking of good works, if you will. And so this guy went to the, to the, to the, um, the big chapel there in, in Wittenberg, if I'm not mistaken, Germany. And he nailed a 95-point thesis saying, you're wrong and the Bible is right. And so... This was what this conference was about. And so the five speakers spoke about five particular subjects. It's only God's Word. It's only through Christ, not by works, lest anybody should boast. It's only by faith. It's only by grace. And it's only for God's glory. And man, it was an absolute time in God's Word. By the end of the day, we were all a little beat. <laughs> but man, what a blessing. We all went home just like Wednesday nights. We come like this and we leave like this. Right? We come super, we come dead and we leave super refreshed, you know? So we took some pictures. It was just a blessed, blessed time. I want to show the quick pictures and then we're going to have a couple of people come up and, and talk about that. So, next picture. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, um, praise the Lord, man. Praise the Lord. Anyway, so um, next picture. See, they, they had like a little, um, a little replica of the church uh, doors and the thesis that was pinned to the door, right? And so they had all of us come and take pictures. And then Darius thought, oh my gosh, my tío, my husband. <laughs> ha, right? She, she asked for forgiveness. All right, so move on. Hey, where's Tony and Arlene today? I thought, okay, no big deal. Anyway, I just thought, I'm like, hey, <laughs> praise the Lord. Next one. <laughs> seguro, seguro. <laughs> and there's the, there's the, 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 the guys, that, the, the group that was together. Actually, that's the Wednesday night crew right there, minus Ana Rojas, if the truth be told. So um, it was just such a blessed, blessed time. Any more? Or we're good? Yeah, that's it. So, um, man, it was just great. So I asked um, a couple of the guys and, and one of the ladies to just give us a brief overview of, you know, how the Lord, so much that happened yesterday. So, uh, Leo, ven y dime. Ladies and gentlemen, Tigre. I told him to speak in Spanish, to speak in Spanish um, because he's trying to practice Spanish. I didn't want him to speak in English, okay? So, everybody knows Spanish here, right? right except for Jen. Jen, can you translate? A little bit? Oh, no, you're even worse in Spanish, bro. Okay, I'll translate. You, I'll, I'll translate. 
can you understand it all? Yeah? A little bit? Okay. okay. Uh, un... Muchas gracias, Leo. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> no, <perdón. laughs> fue un tiempo, un tiempo maravilloso allí con todos los que, los que participamos de aquello. Eh, ¿Qué pude sacar de, de, del mensaje de, de, los, de los pastores que hablaron, de, la, de las personas que hablaron? El amor de Dios es infinito. Nosotros nos vamos el camino, como dice el pastor, como dice Adán, seguimos el camino y, y Dios nos dio a su hijo. Lo mandó a morir por todos nosotros. Y hay cosas que nosotros a veces somos incapaces de entender la Biblia, la Dios, el amor de Dios es eh, incomprensible para nosotros y, y da sobre todo entendimiento humano eh, y eso fue lo que sacamos sacamos eh, cómo, cómo nosotros podemos participar de estos momentos ahora de eh, hablar de, de la palabra de Dios eh, como tantos hombres y mujeres a través de, de, de toda la historia de, de, de Dios acá en la tierra con nosotros ha muerto por mantener esa palabra viva. Como nosotros a veces no apreciamos que la tenemos ahí y no la disfrutamos. Como otras personas han tenido que sacrificar tanto su vida, su familia, todo, su riqueza, todo lo que han tenido por llevar la palabra de Dios adelante. Todavía hoy en día, en este siglo que estamos viviendo, hay cristianos que están muriendo por ser cristianos. Y que le preguntan, a nosotros no es fácil decir que soy cristiano, pero si nos pusieran un hacha aquí en la cabeza y nos dijera, tú eres cristiano, quizás alguno de nosotros dijera, ¿por qué no? Y esa gente puede decir que sí, que soy cristiano, muere y no renuncian a Dios. Nosotros es fácil decir, yo creo en Dios y yo soy cristiano. Y cuando uno participa en esta conferencia, todas esas personas que muchos de ellos lo tenían todo, no tenían quizás por qué hacer el sacrificio que hicieron, lo hicieron para que hoy nosotros eh, pudiéramos la vida que Dios quiere que vivamos es decir, no, no quiere una vida mala para nosotros, quiere lo mejor para nosotros y nosotros siempre nos empecinamos eh, en perder el camino siempre eh, nos empecinamos en perder el camino y siempre queremos eh, como muchos decimos yo creo en Dios a mi forma y hay una sola forma de creer en Dios y es en la forma como Dios quiere que sea es decir, no hay que yo por aquí, Dios por allá no es por donde Dios quiere Todavía yo, cada vez que nosotros hacemos eso, eh, nos paramos, yo perdona, me hice mal, ven mi hijo, yo te quiero. Y nosotros siempre estamos, como humanos que somos, imperfectos, siempre eh, dispuestos a, a poner los brazos sobre sus cosas. Y el pastor dijo algo que nos machucó la cabeza, porque a veces cuando el pastor dice algo, yo digo, me habló a mí. Y le estoy hablando. Entonces yo a veces quisiera... A veces no me siento bien con lo que dice, porque yo sé que me está diciendo algo que lo que yo estoy actuando mal. Y, y sería más fácil para mí, como quizá otra gente hace, coger la puerta y irme, porque no digo lo que yo quería oír. Y a veces venimos acá a oír lo que queremos oír, no lo que debemos oír. Amén. Eh, nos ponemos bravos con un, con un hermano o con un compañero de trabajo, porque no hace lo que nosotros queremos. La vida cristiana hace lo que quiere Dios. No lo que yo quiero, no lo que quiere el pastor. Si mañana el pastor no viene aquí y habla de la palabra de Dios, no tenemos por qué seguir el pastor. Amén. Es decir, no es adorar a nadie en particular, ni seguir a nadie en particular. Para eso Dios está ahí. El único y el verdadero. I know, but whatever the Lord told you, I know that was tough. That would be tough. <laughs> he was focused though. I saw. I was like, yeah, yeah. You were, well. He said everything I was going to say. <laughs> everything. Well, just a little more. Uh, Give us a little more. I want to start with a scripture. Okay. brothers and the pastors speaking um, about how important the words in the Bible are and the, how 
好changes in something typically a social, political, or economic institution or practice in order to improve it. Your definition was to make better or correcting what was incorrect. All right, so obviously it happened, like I told you guys, or they said yesterday, the reformation started, um, happened over five years ago. 500 years ago. Five, like I said, 500 years ago. So um, the five solas was um, scripture though, Christ alone, faith alone, they get, if you guys want to jot this down, uh, it's scripture. Uh, it's Second Timothy, by faith alone, they refer back to the scripture, Second Timothy 3.16 and Acts 4.12. Um, they're talking about grace alone, and they're talking about those four, first four as pillars. And what it points to, it points to giving God the glory, period. Does that make sense? All right, so, and this was awesome. This got me. Right? It says, what God used then, he uses now. And what is it? The word, right? So, guys, think about it. We're in a church that is biblically sound, doctrinally sound. It's all about the word. So, all of us here are, are in a good place right now. Um, I thought about that. So, even a speak a little while ago, he was talking about, Reformation, right? Again, just the topic. But we are the church. We are being reformed. Think about that. Because we have stuff that is not correct. So what is that guy doing? Using the word to correct us. Does that make sense? You know, that came to me very clear. So, um, talk about the four pillars and what it points to giving God the glory. We were saved to give God glory. And sometimes we don't. That's why God is using his word to correct us so we can give God the glory and to share the word with other people. Does that make sense? Okay. The fuel for the reformation was the word of God. The fuel. And it says the church has separated from the word of God. If you really go, and this is not to knock churches because, again, all the churches are imperfect. However, if it's not aligned with God's word. And then we're talking about people wanting to hear what they want to hear. And the, and the word it says, itchy ear, right? To make them feel good. To, to wow, you know? And it's not about that. 
we always talk about the word is to, you know, correct, reproof, instruct, right? That's exactly why we come to church, because that's what God is doing through the word is all those. The foundation of scripture alone. Scripture alone is the idea of how to reform, how reformation occurs, and that's it. But I want to. This morning, I got a scripture from Worthy, um, and I want to share it because it goes exactly like what we went through, like what we we went through. You know, it says in Galatians three five. It says, therefore, he who su supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he who do it by works of the law or by the hearing of faith? So I thought about when, when I saw the scripture this morning, I was like, wow, man, the Lord just has a purpose behind Galatians 3, 5. So the Lord has a purpose behind everything, man. All these, you know, conferences that we go to, it's all about his word. So I encourage you guys, man. I know we have our days that we don't even feel like taking up the word. But those days, man, that, like, we have to be on fire, man, especially in these end of time. We all have issues and problems, but at the end of the day, that's what's going to, really, that's what, that's the only thing we could rely on, you know? So, thank you, Mato. Bless you, Mato. Thank you. Amen. But I just ask that you guys continue to pray for a, a small little building like theirs because um, we could do something like that. Because if 13 of us can show up and be blessed, 13 of us can show up and bless you know, 20 something others. And so I just ask you to join. I, I kept thinking that last night, Lord, what can we do? What can we do? Because we were really treated like so nicely by such a and the love was amazing. We got we got that love and we got it a lot. So we can do that too. And so what can we Praise do? God. I just ask the Lord to give us a little place. We don't need a, a mansion, but it'll be his little mansion, you know, with us Amen. in it. And so I, I can't wait. That's a great word, baby. Thank you. Thank you guys. Earns you good. Hey, praise the Lord. Hey, Amen. Um, let's um let's dig in. To Philippians today we killed we, we finished the book of Philippians so next week we start a new book I won't tell you what it is um, only like three of you know so but it's all good so hey you're there in the book of Philippians I pray we're gonna we're gonna jump into chapter 4 midway sort of like where we left off last week and so prayfully you're there we're gonna start with verse 4 okay so listen to what it says Paul speaking to the believers in Philippi and speaking to us right he says this verse 4 Philippians chapter 4 rejoice in the Lord always when are we supposed to rejoice in the Lord always. tell me again when always. always right rejoice in the Lord always again I will say rejoice now real quickly I want to remind you that this is the theme of this book and I also remind you where Paul is writing this from he's in a jail cell he's in a jail cell where's Paul in a jail cell. What, what type of letter would you be writing if you were in a jail cell? And by the way, I remind you that... What's that? Yeah, get me out. This lawyer stinks. <laughs> get me another attorney, right? Um, because remember, he wasn't in jail. He wasn't incarcerated because he had stolen or because he had cheated or because he had, um, you know, punched some guy for a parking space. No. No. He was in jail for speaking about the Lord Jesus Christ. And so his... His letter is, rejoice in the Lord always. <laughs> what, Paul? Seriously, Paul? Like, for real, man? Is this really your heartbeat? And he would say, no, this is really my heartbeat. My exhortation to you, young man, my exhortation to you, young lady, is to rejoice in the Lord always, he says. And that's the theme of this letter. 
And so, again, the, the bottom line with that is for you and I to get into a place in our lives that we know that God is in control. Say amen if you're with me. Right? That's really what it's all about. Because, you see, if we know that God's in control, we can deal and we can tackle the hurdles that come our way. We can deal and we can tackle the disappointments that come our way because we know that who? God is what? In control. Right? Can you tell me who's in control? God is in control. And this is why Paul would say, man, I'm in jail. I'm being falsely accused. I'm incarcerated. But you know what? God's got a plan in all of this. And so rejoice in the Lord always. So again, I remind you, that's the theme of this book. Got your Bibles here? Let's continue reading. So he says, verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. We talked about that last week. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing. In other words, don't get stressed out. How many of us get stressed out? <laughs> no, really? I can't believe that, you guys. Right? That never happens to me. Be anxious for nothing, he says. Don't get stressed out, man. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. He says, you're, getting, you're feeling stressed out? Come to God. Let Him know what's up. And the peace of God, and why the peace of God? Because we know that God's in control. Because we know that God hears us. So, and the peace of God, verse 7 which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Now, verse 8. I call this brain food. Right? The, 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 the fruit of the brain. Listen to what he says. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, Whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Your attention, please. Did you see what God said to meditate on? And just as importantly, I want you to understand what He's telling us not to meditate on. Did you see what He said to meditate on? Everything else He says, don't meditate on that. Don't set your mind on those things because they're going to bring you a lot of stress and a lot of lack of peace in your life. I think it was Christy and I that were talking on Wednesday night. She told me, you know what, I don't watch the news anymore. <laughs> I turn off the news. And you know what, I started doing that too because I find that when I start watching the news, all of a sudden, man, this starts going like this. And it's not the coffee, you know? It's like <sighs> home invasions and this and that. And then you start getting a little bit, I don't know about you, but you start, at least it happens to me, man, I start, my mind starts kind of going off a little bit. My mind gets off focusing on the things that are pure and lovely and just and of good report. And my mind starts focusing on all these other things. And so I personally, I'm not telling you what to do. You do what you want to do. I have start, stopped watching the news because it brings me like zero comfort. On the contrary, it brings me a lot of, lot of anxiety. And so I've just stopped completely. And so God says to us here, listen, you want peace in your life? You want, you want to be an overcomer? in areas in your life, listen, I'm telling you what to meditate on. I'm telling you the things to put your focus on. Say amen if you're with me. Amen. This, is, this, is, this is the key. We don't need the Xanax. Is that one of those pills that they give, right? No, that's a depression thing. Okay, so forgive me. We don't need any of that stuff, family, at the end of the day. And some of us might be partaking of it. Whatever, man. That's between you and the Lord. We don't need the alcoholic beverages in, to, in getting drunk. I'm not telling you you can't have a drink. Again, that's between you and you. We don't need to get, you know, drunk. We don't need to go any of that route, man, in order to appease something that's like deep inside. And God says, look, you want peace, you want joy, you want rest, meditate on these things. And, you know, we've begun to practice that. And I got to tell you that it's a foolproof method. In fact, it works. In fact, it works, man. Everything starts like, you know, you just kind of start easing into things just a little differently. And I realize, I realize that some of our jobs are, are high-stress high jobs. I know that. That's part of life. God says if you don't work, you don't eat, specifically for men. So, um, so I'm not telling you that, you know, we're going to go hide in a cave somewhere. That's not God's design for our life. He, he has us here for a purpose, that we would shine and so God would be glorified. Amen? That's the purpose of our lives, 
If you're ever confused about what the purpose of your life is, I challenge you to pick up the book of Ephesians and read chapter 1, verses 3 through 6. That'll give you the purpose for your life. And at the end of it, listen to what it says. For the glory of God. That's it. This is what we were created for. That we would glorify Him. Some of us as attorneys, some of us as janitors, some of us as school teachers, some of us as, listen, fill in the blank. And that's not only our only claim to fame. Obviously, we're mothers, we're fathers, we're brothers, we're, we're neighbors, we're, we're, we're citizens of the United States. And he says, listen, you were born. I, I, I created you so that you would glorify me. Bottom line, that's it. And in the process, we have a choice on how we're going to glorify him. You know, are we going to go about life all bitter? You know, just in, 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 in constant strife with, with those around us and with each other? Or are we going to learn? Or are we going to grow? Or are we going to meditate on that which He told us to meditate on? The things that are good, the things that are pure, the things that are just, the things that are lovely, the things that are of good report. I say to you that all of those, you know how 2 plus 2 equals 4? I would say to you that that equals Jesus. Say amen if you're with me. When our eyes are on the Lord, when our eyes are on just loving Him and being loved back, man, all of a sudden our mind begins to focus on these things. Got your Bibles here? Let's pick up. So listen to what he says. Verse 8 again. So finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, Jesus, Whatever things are just, Jesus. Whatever things are pure, Jesus. Whatever things are lovely, Jesus. Whatever things are of good report, Jesus. If there's any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, Jesus, meditate on these things, Jesus. Verse 9. The things which you have learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Your attention, please. Paul says, listen. I'm not, I'm not doing like many do. I'm not telling you what many say. Do as I say, not, what I, not as I do. You've heard that, right? Have you heard that? Sometimes fathers get accused of that. Hey, son, do this. And, and the son says, but you're not doing it. Do as I say, not as I do, right? Paul says, look, follow me, man. I'm a great example. And, and we see that, in fact, he is. The guy is in jail, incarcerated, and he's writing this letter. Again, I could tell you that at this point in my maturity level, <laughs> that's not the letter I'd be writing. And neither would you. And yet this guy's gotten to the point where he's, where he's understood, hey, it's all about him, man. No matter what position and no matter what place I'm in, it's all about him. So he says, look, follow me. I've set you a good example. Look at verse 10. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, he says that now at last your care, remember he's, he's writing to a group of people that live in Philippi, Philippians, right? Modern day Greece. At last that your care for me has flourished again. Though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. So he says to them, look, I'm in jail. This is not Dade County, uh, this is not TGK. I don't get a blanket. I don't get, um, you know, three meals a day. But you, Philippian church, you know where I'm at and you have sent help in the form of blankets, in the form of food, in the form of fill-in-the-blank family. He says, thank you. Thank you for caring about me. Say amen if you're with me. You're understanding, right? This guy, it's not federal prison where he gets a haircut and I need doctor care even though I've committed tremendous crime. I, you know, I, I get afforded all this care. This is not what we're talking about here. This guy's on his own there. And if you have, if you have family members to come help you, good. And if you don't, listen, too bad. You're a convicted, quote-unquote, criminal. And so he says to the men, thank you. Thank you that you have had this opportunity and in fact, you took advantage of it. Remember we talked about this last week, how God is a meticulous record keeper when it comes to our giving. Say amen if you're with me. We talked about that last week. I reminded you that you can never outgive God. And, and we, were, we were born to give. For indeed it is more blessed to give than to, to receive. Right? And so God says, man, I've given you so that you would give it away, man. Bottom line. 
And so Paul says here, thank you. Thank you for thinking of me and not just forgetting about me. Notice what he says, verse 11, because this is so important. So remember, verse 10, he says, Thank you for caring for me. Thank you for sending me what you sent me. But I want you to know this, verse 11, Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. So he says to them, hey, listen, you and I both know, he says, I, I need. <laughs> and you stepped up and you gave. But I want you to know that I've come to a point in my life, and, and we know, because we've already discussed this, that not too long after this, Brother Paul, Pastor Paul, he gets beheaded. Amen? He's charged, uh, the, the, char the, the, the illegal, the charge, it, it doesn't stick. The, the Emperor Nero, there's a, a great fire that's set up in Rome. He being the, the deranged, let me say it that way, the deranged individual that he was, he blames the fire on the Christians. And so a great, great... Um, persecution of the Christians breaks out and Paul even as Leo said um, when they when they put the knife to his throat he said I will not deny my Lord Jesus Christ and so he was led away to the gallows there in front of everybody tied down and uh, and the the, the 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 gavel or the anvil came down and he was beheaded and so not too far, not too far after this letter was written that this transpired. So again, I, I share that with you so that you would understand the times, so you would understand the, 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 the emotional state that this man could have been in, but yet chose not to be. Because he knew that at the end of the day, Lord, you're in control. Bottom line. And so he says to them, look, verse 11, not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I'm at peace, he says. I'm at peace. Look at verse 12. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. He says, I'm dirt poor right now. I don't even have a place to lay my head. But I used to be a, 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 a rich man, physically, physically. You know the story. We, we've gone through this. I've given you the background. Paul was a, a, one of the leaders of, a, of literally of a country. Filthy rich. I don't like to use the word filthy as if there's some negative connotation to being rich monetarily. Not at all. That there's nothing wrong with having money. Um, praise the Lord for that. Um, you know, God gives because He knows who's going to give. And so... So this man, he, he would be able to tell you, look, buddy, I, I have been up here and now I'm down here for the sake of the cross because of Christ. And he says, I've learned to not, I, I've had nothing. I, I used to have it all and now I have nothing. But I've learned this, that I'm content, he says. My life is God's. Alex and I were talking this morning about a particular individual they don't come to this church, <laughs> okay, just so you know, because everybody starts, hmm, we're a small group, who is it? You know, we're a small group, we, we kind of like hang tight, so everybody knows a little bit about everybody, so um, not to be in each other's Kool-Aid, because we don't, we don't play that, man, you're at your house, I'm at my house, but we still love each other, amen, and we're still in the battle together, um, and so we were talking about this particular individual um, who, um, who just got this great promotion financially. On the surface, you would say, yeah, another 40 grand. I don't know. I don't know what it is. But listen to what's going to happen here. This particular individual, no, no, no judgment on him, by the way. This is just brother and brother talking. So you're being, pre, you, you're, you're being led in on a, on a conversation between brother and brother. Um, so again, no, no condemnation. That's between him and him, this guy. Anyway, so he got, just got like a, this big promotion, but listen to what happens. He's out of the house traveling five days of the week, right? 
He's got two little girls. So you say, um, is it worth it? Like, is it worth it? You know? Now, obviously, one would have to make that decision, right? And again, I'm not saying, but at this point in time that we are in, guess what? They're not going to be going to church because, well, husband's got the new job now. He's not even going to be around. And if he is around, you know the story. I'm too tired, right? So, he, so this is what happens. Wife, away from the Lord now, right? Unless she picks up and brings the kids, but, you know, it's the man who's supposed to lead at the end of the day. Um, husband away, little girls going to school without the love of daddy, right? Well, you, you know the picture. The, the, the list goes on and on. And, and man, I, I pray that you would understand what I'm saying because this is not in condemnation of this individual. If he chose, this is what I need to do, that's his business. Everyone stands before the Lord on their own, but at this point in time, you think, listen, is it worth it, man? Is it worth it when we know where we're at when it comes to our, our, our history, our, the, the, when we know where we're at when it comes to God and Him coming back? Is it worth it, man? Is there any amount of money worth you drawing your family away from the Lord? Can I answer that for you? No. There's no amount of money worth that. And so Paul says here, look, hey, wherever I'm at, I'm content. I'm not going to strive for more necessarily, not that there's anything wrong with that. But listen, I've learned to be content because if, if my life takes me in a direction away from the Lord, then I'm telling you that it's not worth it. Because there's no amount of rubies, there's no amount of, of diamonds, there's no amount of money that can take the place of your relationship with God. It's as simple as that. It, there just isn't. And we're not talking about salvation. I mean, we know that if we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that if He died for our sins, we're saved. Amen? It's not by works, lest anybody should boast. It's strictly by grace through faith. If we believe that, done deal. But you know and I know, just like when the little baby's born, when little Adrian was born, there was much more left for his life, right? He didn't stay a baby. Now, birth was just the beginning. Say amen if you're with me. Our spiritual birth, when we accept that, that man, he died for my sins, and so and now I'm saved, it's just the beginning. Birth is just what? The beginning. Birth is what? Whether it be physical or spiritual. And so it's just the beginning. Now is when we start growing and learning and, 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 and moving forward. And so Paul says, look, man, wherever I'm at, I know that God's in control. I'm content. Look at verse 12. For I know how to be abased. I know how to be poor, he says. And I know how to abound. And I know what it is to be rich. He's speaking in the physical. Everywhere and in all things, I have learned to be both to, both, to be full and to be hungry. Both to abound and and to suffer need. Verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do how many things? All, all things through Christ who strengthens me. For those of you note takers close by, I want you to write John 15, 5. John 15, 5. John 15, 5. Listen to what John 15, 5 says. Jesus speaking says, without me, <laughs> you can't do anything. Without me, he says, you can't do anything. Oh, but pastor, I got a job. Uh, yeah, you know that breath that you just took? Guess who gave it to you? He did. Because without him, you can do nothing. And Paul says, Paul, Paul Paul brings it into the positive. I can do all things through Christ. So he says, no matter what hurdle you, 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 is coming your way, no matter what hurdle you have to cross, no matter what, what um, disappointment comes your way, listen, whatever victory you're experiencing, I can do all things through Christ. Who strengthens me? Say amen if you're with me. Could you turn to somebody, please? Tell them, I can do all things through Christ. Amen.
Amen. Proclaim it. Proclaim it because it's the truth. That's it. Proclaim it because it's the truth. So verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Verse 14, nevertheless, now he, now he shifts his attention back to them specifically. You have done well that you shared in my distress. In other words, you saw my need and you, and you stepped up. You didn't need to because I know what it is to be poor. I know what it is to be rich. You didn't need to because I know what it is to be, man, just about to pop and still order dessert. Right? Yeah. I know what it is to be hungry. I've learned to be content in all things because I know God's in control. But you've done well in stepping up and helping. Look at verse 15. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving but you only. He says, you're the only ones that help, man. <laughs> That's it. For even in Thessalonica, that was another place, obviously Greek, you sent aid once and again for my necessity. See, because he was incarcerated in Thessalonica also, by the way. And they helped. So look at verse 17. This is what I love. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. I want, you, I want to read that one more time. Listen to what Paul says. Thank you for giving, he says. But I want you to know, verse 17, not that I seek what you're giving me. What I seek is the fruit that abounds to your account. I remind you that one day we will stand before the Lord and we will give an account for that which has been entrusted to us. What did you do with your time? What did you do with the eyes that I, that I gave you? Because none of you are blind here today. Yes, we, some of us that are a little bit older wear glasses, right? What did, I, what did you do with the ears that I, that I entrusted you with? What did you do with the children that I gave to you? Because I could have given those two to anybody, but I gave them to you. What did you do with them? What did you do with the, with the, with, with the fact that I allowed you to be born in the United States of America in, the, in this century? Because, you know, you and I could have been born in Syria, and right now we would be fighting each other for a piece of bread. Because, by the way, there's believers in Syria right now, um, and they're suffering a, a great, great trial. And even as Leo uh, shared with us, which we know the deal, um, there are believers right now in other places of the United States that they're being persecuted for their faith. The, the horrific stories, we, we supported some missionaries, and one of them is far-reaching ministries, and... We're trying to get that gentleman to come. I sent him an email the other day. Um, their ministry specifically in Uganda and in, and in that part of Africa, you know, because there are believers there. There are true believers in Jesus Christ. And, man, if you just, like, the, the, the horrific things that are transpiring with some of our brothers and sisters, it is just downright heartbreaking. Only because they have proclaimed the name of Christ. The, the, the atrocities being a, happening with the ladies so that they don't have other kids, so that they don't procreate, is absolutely just, it's shocking. It's shocking that somebody would actually be able to do that to somebody else. And so I share that with you because, listen, even as Christy said, we are a privileged bunch. And the fact that we were allowed to be born here, I know that some of you weren't born here, but look where you are now. And some of us drive nice, nice cars and the AC is cranking in the, in, the, uh, in the house and the refrigerator is full of food. And today when we leave, uh, some of us have plans, not today, but next week to go eat together. And, and, and God's going to say, look, th there's, to whom much is given, much is required. And I have, and, and one day you will give an account, but not like this, finger in your face. God's not going to do that. He's just going to say, son, daughter... I gave you so much. What'd you do with it? And so Paul says, listen, I don't desire that you would give me anything regardless of whether I'm in need or not. What I desire is that fruit that's going to be on your account. Because again, I remind you that God is a meticulous record keeper of our, of our doings. 
I joked with you before last week, like the Cubans say, no se le va ni una. No se le va ni una. Everything is written down. And he says, listen, there's going to be a day when, when there's going to be fruit that's going to be produced and, and, and everybody's going to see. And I joke with you sometimes that on that day I'm going to be cheering for you when your name is called. I tell you that all the time. You know, they're going to say, Willie, come on up. And I'm going to be like, yeah. I know that dude. We went to church together back there when we used to, uh, on, uh, in earth. We went, we were, did, did church together. And so I want to challenge you with this as we close up shop. As the days progress and as, the, as, the, as that which we know as time is about to come to an end. Because you know that we will live forever. Amen? Amen? Amen. We're going to live forever. But God has allowed us to be here and He's given us this earth suit to do life here on earth because the real you, you know, is your spirit. As a matter of fact, this is going to go back to the dust and, and the real us is going to be there and then we're going to be clothed with another body that's going to be able to be in the presence of the Lord. This is what the Bible says. And so, so as, as we're here with this earth suit, I, I want to just challenge you with, look, man, we know the signs of the times. This is not the days to get slack when it comes to the things of the Lord. Men here today, I challenge you to be leading your families in the things of the Lord. It's not good for you to miss church. And it's not because it's this church. I'm telling you, this is not the time to grow slack. Why do I tell you that? Not because I need you here. Where God guides, God provides. But I seek the fruit to be on your account. That's my desire as the, as the pastor of this church. Mothers here today, single moms here today, man, this is not the time to get slack. And I don't tell you that so that we can have more people here. Please, you should know by now who you're dealing with. I can care less. What I want is the fruit that's going to abound to your account. Say amen if you're with me. That's what I desire for you. Because when they call your name on that day, and your name's going to be called, I'm going to be your biggest, and I'm not going to say cheerleader, because I don't know about men being cheerleaders. That kind of makes me kind of, shouldn't say that, I guess. I don't know. If any one of you are males and you were a cheerleader, man, praise the Lord for you. I'm just old school, man. I don't know about that. But either way. Yes for cheerleaders, male or female. Okay, so I don't know if I want to come. I don't know if I want to call you. A, I don't. I'm not going to be. A, I'm going to be cheering for you. How's that? I'm going to be your biggest cheerer. Is that even a word? Who cares? You understood, right? Is that before or after you run us over? Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So I'm going to be. I'm going to be your biggest. When they call your name, man, I'm just going to be like, yeah. Supporter. And I can't. Amen. And I, can't, and I can't wait for the Lord to look upon you and say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into your rest, man. You've been faithful in the little. Here's much. Amen? And that's what I want the Lord to say to you. And I know that's what you want the Lord to say to me. So we need to keep going forward. This is not the time to get slack. And if you see somebody getting slack, listen, it's not just the pastor's duty. It's not just Alex Diaz, who the Lord has raised up next to me to, to make phone calls, to be, to be sending scriptures. How about you to us? Let's go. I, I would like an encouragement from you too. So that your fruit may abound to your account. Amen? Amen? Okay, good. So we're getting that, right? Let's, let's continue. Let's close up shop. Verse 17, let's close it up. And not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. Indeed, he says, I have all and abound. Paul, what are you talking about? You're in jail, man. He says, you don't know who I am. You don't know who I believe in. I have all, he says. Notice, I am full. Paul, really? Having received from Epaphroditus, Epaphroditus, the things sent from you. Remember, the physical. What do they turn out to be according to God when we give? Notice, 
a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. That's a good thing. Amen? I don't want you to gloss over that, man. That's heavy stuff there. We give physically. Don't get caught up with just money. We give physically. We give of our time. We give of a phone call sometimes when somebody's hurting. You know what Paul says? It's a sweet-smelling aroma to God. It's a sacrifice from us. And God says, man, that smells good to me. <laughs> what, Lord? Seriously, Lord? I just gave $5, Lord. <sighs> it smells good to me, son. It smells good to me. Is that like deep or what, man? So notice, verse 19. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now to God our and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. He closes up by greeting some of the people that he remembers. Greet every saint in Christ Jesus. Hey, those that are there, say I tell them I say hello. The brethren who are with me greet you. All the saints greet you, but especially those who are in Caesar's household. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hey, can we stand? Let's get a, just a point of contact so that we can pray. And we will go watch the Dolphins. <laughs> oh, no, they don't play today. Thank God, actually, because they stank. All right, let's have a point of contact. So I'm going to pray for you right now. I'm going to pray for us. And I remind you, Jesus loves you. Amen? And when we make Him number one, all these other things come on to us. Our, our main goal is to make Him number one. When we do that, we don't need to worry about a job. He'll give it to us. We don't need to wor worry about putting bread on our table because He will, what? Give it to us. We don't need to worry about fill in the blank because He will be there, right? To sustain our need because of His riches. Our responsibility and our only responsibility is to make God number one in our lives. In every aspect of our lives. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you again for this day. We thank you for the breath that we just took, Lord. You have given it to us, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that, um, that you've allowed that to us. Lord, we don't want to be those that are ungrateful, Lord, because we know in, even in this physical realm how cruddy, ungrateful people are, Lord. How, how, what a bad taste in our mouth, people that we have given to and turned. How, how ungrateful and how, how, how bad ungrateful people are, Lord. And, and so we want to say to you, Lord, thank you. We don't want to be ungrateful, Daddy. We want to make known, Lord, and we want to even say it out loud, that which was in our hearts. Lord, we thank you for being so good to us. For if it would have just been on the cross that you died and then left us alone, it would have been enough, Lord. But yet you continue to shower us, Lord, and to give us. Lord, thank you for allowing us to be born in this country. Thank you for allowing all the, all the things that you've allowed us, Lord. We're reminded that to whom much is given, much is required. Lord, let us not be those unfaithful un, uh, and ungrateful servants, Lord. We want to be the men and women that you want us to be, Lord. Thank you for showing us what love is, Lord. For if it wasn't that you loved us, we would not know what love is, Lord. We would not know to give of ourselves sacrificially. We would not know what that is, Lord. We'd be like everybody else, mine, mine, mine. And you say, but I'm giving you, so it's not even yours. So, Lord, thank you for that. And I pray for those that are here today. I pray for the, the big group that's not here today, Lord. I don't know where they're at, but we pray for them, that they would be included in this prayer. We lift ourselves up to you. And we pray that you would again continue to do the good work that you began. We want to follow you, Lord. Um, we understand that the, the times, um, and we understand, Lord, that we will also come face to face with you, Lord, on that day. And our salvation, our relationship with you won't be in question. That's already been sealed, signed, sealed, and delivered. Even as, uh, I forget who the singer was, signed, sealed, delivered, I'm yours. Stevie Wonder? Even as Stevie Wonder sang, Daddy, that's us. Signed, sealed, delivered, we're yours, man. 
because of the blood of the cross. So it's not about that, Lord. It's about that which you have given us here today. So, Lord, we, go, we, we keep going strong and focused, Lord. That's it, Daddy. And so, again, thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day. In Jesus' name we pray, and all of God's people said, Amen, amen and amen. amen. God bless you, family. I'll see you next week or maybe Wednesday, God willing.